safe, I don't think they'd be competitive. Hello again and welcome. We're delving into cup history today. You've often heard about the magic of the cup, a cliche for sure. But undoubtedly the magnetism of this great competition is so often induced by the possibility of an upset, the act of a giant killer. Bobby, you've been a victim. Yes, I have. Nor Norwich City about 25, 30 years ago when we were riding high at the top of the first division and we had to go and play Norwich in the cup. I think it was the third or fourth round and we lost 3-1, frosty pitch. Um, completely unpre unprepared for what was going to happen to us. They, they took the initiative, they won every free ball, uh, they took the chances and we were out. And, and I've never been so ashamed ever. It, w it was absolutely disastrous as far as, as far as I was concerned as a footballer. But one thing is that, that once you're beaten and humiliated like that in a cup upset, it does stand you in good stead yes, for the future. Memory. And you make sure, if you can, that it never happens again. <laughs> well, Bobby goes back to 1971 for a real classic, a result that so many of us will remember, and the teams that produced it, Colchester and Leeds United. Round the back of the defence. Yes! Oh, what a save! And that must be one of the saves of the season. Well, we have an old friend back with us, a man with a glorious left foot and an uncompromising tackle. Well, he was a significant member of the great Leeds United sides under Don Revy and made a very positive contribution to the great run of success in the late 60s and the early 70s. If you fancied your chances against Leeds, you had to contend with Norman Hunter. Good to have you back, Norman. Nice you must have got to know quite a few referees in your time, I suppose, did you? I got to know quite a few, <laughs> yeah, over the years. It makes you cringe when you see some of those tackles that were flying around. I don't... I think we might have walked today, Dickie, for some of them. <laughs> But cup shocks, uh, I mean, uh, Bobby has talked about Norwich City and you must remember, of course, Colchester United. Well, I do, yes. Uh, <clears throat> we'd flown down, you know, being the big club in the first division. And we got down there and uh, I remember walking on the pitch with Big Jack and it was windy, pitch was bumpy. And I remember talking to Jack and saying, we've got to get stuck into these today or because it's, it was one of those conditions and one of those days, Diggy, where if they got on top, as Bobby said, they win the first balls, get after us. It was a difficult game and uh, it proved so. Mm. Bobby, you were saying that you had to run as fast as them. Uh, well, the one that lesson I learned, especially if you, if you were a premiership or a, or a first division team, was that if you went in the FA Cup away from home, the, the one thing that, that you were supposedly was the, that you were better players. But if you didn't work as hard as them, then you can catch a cold. Yeah. You, had to, you had to run with them, you had to run as fast with them, you had to be mm. as con convinced as them that you were going to win the match, and you had to run and you had to fight. And if you didn't do that, you, then you, you may actually be humiliated. Mm. And if you, but if you were in the right frame of mind, I didn't think there was anything to be afraid of going no. to play a lower opposition no. in the FA Cup, as long as you were mentally prepared for it. But the fact that you and Jack had that conversation, did that not put you on the back foot straight away? Well, not particularly, no. I think you, you look at, you're in the cup competitions and you know there's going to be a big crowd there. All right, uh, it's been mentioned, we probably played on better pitches. Mind you, not Ellen Road at the time, it was, it was like a <laughs> mud bath. But uh, the pitch was definitely in their favour, windy, bumpy. Yeah. And I can remember the game starting and for the first five minutes we were hardly out of our half and that set the tempo of the game. Well we're going to see that very soon. Let's have a look at the teams first of all that were involved in that historic encounter. Colchester first. Norman let's tax your memory shall we? Well it's it's not that good but I can remember the lad uh, Cram I think he came from uh, West Brom somewhere like that. I think he's got a famous uncle. You've got a famous nephew, yeah, I think. Famous nephew. He's the he's sorry, yeah, sorry, wrong, wrong, yeah, wrong yeah. way. Sorry, but he's got somebody famous in the front. Garvey's the same. I think he came from uh, Hull City. But the ones that I do remember are the forwards. Lewis, Brian Lewis, he had a, a, a big say in what happened on that day. And the lad up front who I was marking and Jack was, which uh, Dave Simmons, a big, strong uh, inside forward then. And then Ray Crawford, who really scored an awful lot of goals in his time at Ipswich and he had several clubs but he was the one that uh, we were worried about and as it turns out oh yeah Bobby tell us about the lead side well it was one of the great lead sides um, I mean 
every one of them are famous uh, for what they did in this particular era. Uh, great midfield players, Johnny Giles, um, Paul Reaney, Terry Cooper at the back, strong as anything. No Norman, obviously, my brother Jack win everything in the air. Mick Jones, Alan Clark, go great goal scorers. Pete could score with, mm. from any distance, yeah. was a terrific shot. And Paul Madeley there again, a, whole, a very, very consistent player throughout the Leeds era. Remember, it's a fifth round tie. 16,000 were packed into the Lair Road on the 13th of February, 1971. If you need running, that was the year that the D became the P. Yes, we were introduced to decimal currency, and I've been confused ever since. We join the tie for the kick-off, and in the commentary position is David Coleman. And the Leeds are playing with the wind behind them. Final check on the referee's watch, and with the linesman. And Jack Charlton ready to pump a high one straight away, being carried a long, long way by the wind. That was Crown. Now, Maidley for Leeds. Straight away, working the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper, M. Smith. And Sonsby, out jump by Hunter, but he was pushed. Takes a free kick to Colchester. Norman Hunter. And Leeds will want to press home the advantage of this almost gale force win they've got in the first half. Taken by Brian Hall, hit by Lewis. Oh, that was well blocked. Crawford really got hold of that. Ray Crawford really hit it. That's Bobby Graham with the throw. In fact, he's settled for Brian Lewis taking it. And they certainly got at you right from the start, didn't they, Norman? Well, yes, I can remember. I, I give a free kick away. Uh, we'd, got, we'd set off in their half, and I'd give a free kick away. And then from then, they put a lot of pressure on us. And uh, there was, you saw headers, all right. Big Jack was a great in the air, great header of a ball. But they had Simmons and they had Crawford, and they were going to put the ball in there. And they were going to play and pick up the pieces. Cooper. treacherous and ball beat them all but normally they would have timed their jumping better Brian Gibbs Graham Smith with a goal kick for Colchester Hunter which is Madeley and trouble off the ball between Simmons and Hunter and an open clash No, you're getting a bit of your own medicine there. Well, I did, yeah. He was a big lad, Simmons, and, <laughs> and rightly so. You know, if you uh, if you get stuck into people, then you you expected back. <laughs> but he he in the end he has the last say because he gets the third goal. <clears throat> and Bobby, I mean, they're really going to put that ball as far as often as they can right into that uh, Leeds penalty area, aren't they? Really. They're yeah, that's keep right. on thumping the wall at them. You see, they, they would have expected to be humiliated. They're, they're, they're really underdogs. But the longer the game goes on and Leeds haven't done them any great damage, the more it just lifts their confidence and just gives them that little boost. Lorimer with the throw. Cooper, Lorimer. Awkward. because of the wind and Clark was inches wide. And Maidley penalised. 
Maybe claiming that uh, Brian Lewis, number seven, made it back for him. Captain Bobby Cram to take the kick. He didn't make contact, but he was fouled. Gary Sprague, who on occasions uh, has made rather odd mistakes, uh, but rated by Don Reilly, one of the best keepers in the league, and certainly leads a defensive record from season to season, supports that. There's Gilchrist. Cooper with the throw. Hunter looking for Sprague. Sprague to Hunter. Jones, policed by Garvey. Clark. Cooper. Okay. Number three, Bobby Cram. The goalkeeper. Graham Smith. Ball hanging back in the wind. Won by Maidley. This is Jones. Maidley again. A cram for Colchester. It's Giles. Ten minutes gone and no score. Carla. Smith. A challenge by Laura, but the crowd didn't like it, but the referee waved it on. Hall. It's Lewis. Vaughan. Lewis. Vaughan has turned here. And Sprank save leads then with the defense absolutely sliced apart. And with a very neat move by Colchester. And Leeds look totally incapable. Well, a good save by Gary Sprank. I mean, he had a dodgy start, but that was a good one. That was a great save. Uh, what a great move that was. Yes. You know, it wasn't uh, low division football, that. Uh, good play, played out, good one too. And, and pace uh, as well. Uh, pace, highest quality. Yeah. That, was, that was terrific, yeah. They were very pleased that they didn't score the elite. Oh, it's awkward again. And the referee's whistle is gone. But Sprague didn't exactly inspire confidence at that moment. He may want to have been pushed up. But no goalkeeper is going to like these conditions. And on top of all else, it's bitterly cold. Gary Sprague not wearing gloves. Clark. This is Hall. Seven police by Jack Charlton. Well, Charlton missed his tackle completely. And the ball ran very kindly for Leeds then. And in fact, the referee stopped play and penalised Charlton. This free kick could be awkward because any ball in the air is a real test. Kick being taken by Brian Lewis. Oyster oh, missed it and get oh. Crawford got it. One down, Norman. What do you remember of that goal? Well, I can I can remember uh, Lewis taking it, and I remember my job was to mark Crawford. And as it was knocked in, Gary started to come for it. Mine, <laughs> yours, and then, then he left it. And Here then it unfortunately, is. then Crawford had got away from me and scored. In slow motion. Oh, oh yes. Indecision. Well, it was a bit, and if you see prior to that, the free kick that was given, the lad Simmons, every time Gary got the ball, Simmons was after him in the air and everything else. And Big Jack, who'll give the free kick away there, just tried to have a little tap at him just to let him know that he wasn't supposed to do that. Mm. Really controlled football. Hunter. Reedy. Don Reeve and Les Clocker there will recognise that they've got an uphill problem 
because conditions are all against control. Crawford. Good play again. And Charlton. This is Cooper. Paul for Colchester. And a foul by Bates. Now it's waved on. It looked to be a bit high, to say the least, but the referee had a good view of that. That's the strength of the wind, thrown well over the halfway line. Cooper for Leeds. One for Jones to fight for. Marm, number nine. Just to throw. And Leeds are not at all happy on this tiny pitch. It's very compact. There's very little room from the touchlines to the stands. They haven't been able to settle at all. Hooper. Canada. Gilchrist. Good ball. Gibbs. Crawford's there. Simmons. 2 0. Ray Crawford was always going, to, always going to be the problem, wasn't he? Yeah, well, he was a goal scorer and he was looking for, for little half chances. Yeah. And he was brave. The ball came in from the right hand side of the field. A bit of a speculative thing, but nevertheless. It just caused a little bit of a indecision at the back. Uh, a blockage had fell down. Instinct as a striker is, where is it? And he just sees it there, swings his left foot, and just has the little look that it, it actually hits the goal. 2 0 down at that point, then you must, <laughs> you know, you're up against it. Well, you know you're up against it, but if you look at it, uh, they deserve to be two yes. up. The first to the brawl, the, the, the playing the better stuff. Yeah. All we are doing here at the moment is just hitting long balls, mm. and uh, they deserve to be where they are. Leeds football, it's certainly not destroying Colchester, but let's face it, have made their moves well and built up very nicely indeed. They being brought back, it's a free kick to Leeds, so the players don't know. Well, Colchester are full of aggression, and they're, they're playing their football well, they're working out their moves, and the conditions just don't seem to have settled. <clears throat> 2 0 uh, and Lee's trying to come back and maybe a bumpy pitch or maybe first touch or what mm. there well they're, they're like Norman says they're just playing so well and they're, they're quite prepared to take chances probably more chances than they would normally do in the mm. league position that they're in uh, they know that if they don't take a few chances they're not going to be good enough to win but they are taking them and, and it's working I mean Garvey with his left foot there would never in a million years have had a crack at goal from that distance with his left foot you know, but against it, it, the win, against the win, missed the post by six mm. inches. You know that would have been three. I mean, it's just this. This is really typical, typical upset uh, yeah, in the club. And, and certainly, coaches are dishing out the medicine too, Norman. Well, uh, yes, they are. Well, it was their cup final, Dickie. They were up for this one, day, yes. and we were probably the best team in the land, or one of the best teams at the land at the time. And they were not going to let us settle. They were not going to let us play. Yeah. Uh, and their tactics yeah. were were dead right. Yeah. 
Greedy. That is of injury time played off. Oh, Bates the lead. Jones. There's Gilchrist who got the decisive foot there. Lewis and a throw to Leeds. Lewis quite happy to waste time by taking the ball away. A Cooper with the throw. The whistle will go any moment, and there it is. And Leeds are trailing by two goals to nil. The goal scored by Ray Crawford after 18 and 24 minutes, 30 odd years of age, has really shown himself in this first half to be a very, very good player still. So Colchester United with an amazing two-goal lead at half-time, and I wonder what Dan, uh, Don Revy would have said in the uh, dressing room, uh, Norman. Well, it wasn't the best, you know. He, he was not used to being 2 nothing down. And I think he told us that we'd have to compete with them because, as we've seen there, they, they were first to the ball, they were, they were aggressive, but also they were playing some good football. So we had to roll our sleeves up, forget that we were the best players and match them first. And then, But unfortunately, we allowed score. Uh, I don't know, I think it was fairly early on in the second half to make it three. It's amazing that a first division side of Leeds calibre hadn't actually got themselves up for that game. Yeah, well, I mean, you don't know what's in, in people's minds. It's a very psychological thing, the FA mm. Cup. Mm. And if your mind's not attuned to it, you know, then you, then you, you could get caught. Um, it, like Norman says, they are one of the top teams in, in, the, in the English league, mm. you know. Yeah. One, of the world's, one of the world's great club sides, you know. And it's a great challenge to all these young lads down there. They, they don't like being humiliated. They don't want to be humiliated. So they're going to give the best. They're going to take a few chances. They're going to be first to the ball. And, and if you don't match them and you don't compete, then you're in trouble. And that's what's happened with Leeds. And you I hadn't won the cup under uh, that time anyway, had you? We hadn't. No. No. No, we hadn't won it. Uh, but it's, uh, you could see what they were told. The big yeah. lad Simmons was told every time Gary Spray catched a ball, caught a ball, you be there and you get underneath him and you upset him. And rightly so, because if it allowed us to play, Dickie, we'd have gone out, played a normal game, and then we probably would have run out comfortable winners. But mm. uh, that's the cup. And you were a marked man too, it would seem. You well, were hobbling it's... around and you had uh, people having their names taken. Well, well, it's part and parcel, isn't it? it <laughs> you, you expect that. Well, we'll return to this fifth line tie for the second half in just a couple of minutes' time. And they'll go 3 0 up. You're watching. And welcome back. To remind you, Bobby and our guest Norman Hunter are looking back on a memorable encounter between Colchester and Leeds in the fifth round of the Cup, February 1971. A somewhat painful experience for Norman, but he's a strong man. The score at half time 2 0 to Colchester. A strong win now behind them. And this is Hall. And straight away they're causing trouble. Simmons was looking there for the ball coming back off Gary Sprake. Exactly the same as the first half, Norman. I mean, they just got straight back at you. Well, straight from the kickoff there, Crawford played the Crawford and he knocked a great ball right out to the, the guy wide on the left he took Paul Rini on and he got a great chance knocked into the box and that could have been and that was straight from the kickoff so they've established their their point straight away well there was uh, the, the, the manager would have just said to them in the dressing room you get out and do exactly the same you're upsetting them you're two up you're in the driving seat keep putting the pressure on don't let them come back at you and don't let them play Simmons Carilla, Clark. Carilla sticking hard at Clark. This is Cooper. And it's gone for a corner. The decision's a perfectly good one, in fact. The crowd probably didn't recognise the rebound, but no doubt at all about it. And that was why the goalkeeper made such desperate efforts to stop it. Our leads have pushed nine men right up for this. They've got to get back in this game. And that's Crown again. Cooper for Leeds. Turning into trouble. Crawford. And Lewis for Colchester. And Simmons one against one here. Simmons and Reedy.
You remember that goal very well, Norman, don't you? <laughs> very well indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but that, as I've said to Bobby, that Simmons, that's what he was there for. He was to upset Gary. And on that one, it was not long. Gary started to come. He went back. And then he came. And then as you look at it, when he does come, he's colliding because the distance that ball travels, he should be taking that. And then it's, it's in the back of the net. I didn't realise that Norman could actually get up the high. Oh, didn't you? He was roasted. That was a quite a surprise, really. But uh, it, two, thing, two things have happened now in this game. A Leeds have realised that the long ball is not going to work anymore. You have to you have to start building up, and and that's what they're good at. And uh, they're starting to get a little bit more time and a little bit more space because the second thing that, that's happened is that Colchester are tiring a little bit. That's right. Did you know that yeah. you could actually get up that high, uh, Norman? I didn't did you really. Get it on the back I, of someone else, did you? I never used to go up. I was only because <laughs> Big Jack used to go there, yeah. you know, and I was always still stay at the back. But because of the situation, mm. got a shout from the box: "Get yourself up there!" Yeah. And it wasn't what you call a powerful header, Diggy, but it, it crossed the line. But the, goal, the, the goalkeeper also left his goals, didn't he? Yes, he did. Okay. He probably felt that he wasn't taking part in this match because he hadn't really had that much to do, had he? <laughs> into trouble. Simmons. Lewis. Free kick to Colchester. Brian 
Cameron Lewis is giving Terry Cooper a fair amount of trouble. So Cram to take the kick. And with Crawford's head up front, Leeds can't be complacent. He's miscated totally, he slipped. It's Garvey. Hall. not getting any distance at all against this win. This is dangerous again, Leeds Court. Crawford. Oh, he'll not have many better chances than that. And this is Charlton for Leeds. And Crawford hanging his head. That's just the kind of thing he usually finishes so well. And that surely would have been the finish of Leeds then. But a spectator trouble in the background. Paul, a Giles for Leeds. Gilchrist was in hard after Giles then. This is Clark. There are the two of them clashing again. This is Maidley. Hunter to Cooper. Now it's happening for Leeds, isn't it, uh, Norman? It was. That was a good goal. But uh, we, we've started to play, haven't we? We've, mm. As Bobby said, they've run out a little bit of steam now and we've started to play. But when you look at that, we've still quite a way to go. You know, we, we've 17 minutes left. And you would think, you would fancy our chances now, but uh, there's one save in particular that I remember that the keeper makes. But you'd have fancied us to get the goal, but, but we never did. Got a knock. And the 
six-yard box. Takes a lot to disturb Norman Hunter. Well, that's Cocker on there, no doubt, saying, come on, come on. He's not going to waste any time in case the referee... Uh, oh, well, what's the problem there? I just went over on my shoulder. I used to have a, a, a little bit of bother with, with the shoulder. I once landed on it and uh, I, I knocked it out of joint or whatever. And it used to bother me from time to time. If I fell on it, I got a knock on it. Jones back to Cooper. Ball by Charlton, but Jones had gone slightly the wrong way. Five minutes left, five minutes for last year's beaten finalists and first division leaders at the moment to save the indignity of being beaten by a fourth division side. Hunter back on the field, as you may have noticed. This is Reedy. Around the back of the defence. Away. It's yeah, well, it's when you know your luck's out when that kind of save happens just five minutes to well, go that, and you're looking for that one goal. I think it, it looks as if it's Mick Jones, it appears to be Mick Jones, but Mick was saying afterwards it was their number five that actually played that. What he was trying to do he was trying to get in front of Mick and he and he just and, and the way people are hit across the goal low and hard, Brian Garvey, and he just he just got a foot in front of me and it flew at the keeper. What a save it was! And the time is running out, Bobby, isn't it? Well, yeah, that's short of time now. It's very difficult for a team like Leeds, you know, to be patient and to keep knocking the, passing the ball and, and doing what they're good at when time's running out. Yeah. Literally, you've got to resort to knocking the odd long ball in, which is playing into their hands. To Bates. And Leeds playing so much better in the second half. Three minutes to save it. Clark, Jones. It's a goal kick. And Colchester now being rattled by this constant Leeds attack. He's crammed the captain. And Leeds must push him out up on this goalkeeper and not let him waste time. It was Charlton experienced Jack Charlton who recognised that. A Hunter. This is Simmons for Colchester. Cooper to Hunter. Crawford challenging for everything. He's 33 or 34, and he's playing with the enthusiasm of a teenager. The referee is ignoring that. He's waving play off. Jones, a corner to Cram. Two minutes to go. Hunter for Leeds. Cooper. Maidley. And Crawford is still down and staying down, but nobody taking a scrap of notice. Maidley now to Reedy. This is Lorimer. And every tackle, every move by Colchester being roared on. Lorimer looking for Jack Jordan and Jones. That's Jones. Garvey was in the way. 90 seconds left. And Gibbs just pumping it anyway. Crawford's back on his feet. And that's straight to Hunter, and back come Leeds once more. Charlton, here's Jones. Did well to resist that, and the referee's blown up. Free kick to Leeds. A minute left. The wall being pushed back, three and in, now four. It's Giles, Hunter. seconds left, and 
the fourth division side still lead by three goals to two. Now 30 seconds, but there is some injury time. Maidley was fouled, but the referees let it go. Kicked in the stomach. a considerable amount of injury time and look at Les Tocker the lead trainer he sprinted on then I would think there are at least two or three minutes of injury time in the second half so it's going to be Terry Cooper to take the throw in leads in injury time there's supposed to be two or three minutes of injury time just that sort of set time away from defeat Maidley, Torini but you can never tell with this lead side they've certainly come back in the second half Maidley being harried by Simmons Crawford now and Simmons is streaking through the middle the throw to Colchester The referee, under considerable pressure from the crowd, are blowing their own whistles for time. A minute of injury time been played. Crawford wasting as much time legitimately as he can. And Leeds must get on with this. It's Hunter to Cooper. Fates with the play. Yes, a day the coast fans will never ever forget. Leeds getting the better of the half of the second half in terms of goals, but unable to stave off defeat. Let's hear from the triumphant manager, Dick Graham. Dick, you're a man who says that uh, he believes in football miracles, but this must be something that's happened today. Well, I don't, I don't think it was a miracle. I think we earned it today, didn't we? We worked hard and we played very well today. I, I don't think it was a miracle. I must say that uh, no one could quarrel with the result, but no one could expect it in many ways either. Well, I must say I was a little bit surprised to get three goals. You know, I was hoping we could beat them one none or something like that, but to get three goals, goals was marvellous. But we must give credit to this magnificent lead side for the way they, they, they controlled their game after we got three goals, and they, they came back at us, and we were chasing the ball around in circles, quite honestly. And uh, to get those two goals back, and then only that magnificent save by Graham Smith at uh, the last uh, few minutes, uh, you know, really put us into the, into the next round. We've got a crowd we've got, haven't we? You know, they really got behind us, didn't they? And they urged us on, and the tired old legs kept going. It was marvellous. I think I said in the commentary that uh, Graham Smith deserved a cup medal in his own right for that, because it was mm. one of the best saves I've yeah, seen. it was great, wasn't it? Yeah. I knew, I, when he saved that uh, shot, actually, I thought we, you know, I, I said, we, we've won now, we're there now, because uh, uh, the team, I think, uh, raised themselves on, on that particular save. Well, let's just move on to Ray Crawford, the man who was doing the damage at the other end. Uh, Ray, I think you said it, uh, in the grandstand interview at lunchtime that you've got this knack for scoring goals. You know, you, either had it, had it, or you haven't got it, you've yeah. got it, and you yeah. certainly showed it again. Yeah, well, I'm due one good game a year, perhaps I had it today. But, um, you know, I do score goals against Leeds, I don't know why, it's ten now over my, in my career, so uh, no more important than today. No, it must seem a long trip back to Leeds after that uh, result. <laughs> oh, it, was, it wasn't such a... It, along because we, we flew back yeah, but, but uh, the dressing room was terrible uh, we couldn't really believe and I think in that situation you, you think to yourself no there's another it's, it's going to be played again tomorrow or yeah. something like that you think you're going to get another crack at it but uh, in fairness we, we didn't do ourselves uh, just as first half second half we played we knocked it about but uh, I think they deserved everything they got and uh, they didn't, we've seen, they didn't play sort of fourth division football, they passed it, they good goal scoring situations and they deserved the victory. As Dick Graham said, uh, no miracle, they earned their 3-2 win. 
No, not at all. And when, when it was 3-2, when Leeds had got it back to 3-2, uh, you were watching it there, and, and they, they did still have the pattern at the back. Yes. You know, it was still difficult for yeah. Leeds to find ways through because yeah. there were enough defenders back there. So that they were well organised, even, even at that stage when you'd have thought maybe they would have panicked a little bit. But they didn't. They, they, they kept the cool. But on a happier note, uh, Norman, you went all the way next year, beating Arsenal in the final. Yes, we, we had a few disappointments and were... At Leeds United, we lost a few, lost a few semis, but the gaffer always used to say every season, right, that's forgotten now, let's get on again, another yeah. season. There was plenty of glory there at that time, wasn't there? That's right, and, we, and I don't know what we finished that year in the league, but we were up there at the mm. top, we'd have been in other competitions, so uh, we were always involved in something. Well, Norman, you have to thank very much for joining us, very good to see you yes. again. I hope that we can count on your support next week at the same time. Until then, from all of us, goodbye.